Hello friends, in this video we are going to see about one of the most important technique in environmental microbiology that is most probable number technique or MPR test. This method is used to determine the amount of contamination in a sample especially the water sample that is used for drinking purpose. It is used to estimate the number of bacteria in diluted samples. Diluted samples are like water, river, ponds, lakes. As these water bodies have very large quantity of water, if we estimate the number of bacteria in this water body by taking a water sample from only one spot, it will not give the appropriate number of bacteria in the water body because in the bank side there will be different material count when compared to the center of the pond. So to estimate the approximate number of bacteria in a water body we will be using the most probable number technique so uh, we all know that water bodies or even uh, any sample will have uh, numerous new varieties of bacteria but to test the portability of the water we need to detect whether the water sample has the coliform bacteria or not this coliform bacteria includes a class of bacteria like e coli klebsiella etc the presence of this coliform bacteria indicates the contamination of the water bodies with fecal samples. So obviously, fecal contaminated water is not suitable for drinking purpose and it can be declared as not portable. The main principle of this method is that the coliform bacteria can ferment lactose into acid and gas. So in this fermentation process, the lactose sugar is broken down into acid and in this process, gas is produced. This pH drop can be indicated by the color change in the medium and gas production can be identified visibly by observing the bubbles in the tubes. This technique includes three major steps. First step is presumptive test, second is confirmatory test and the final test is completed test. Let's move on to the materials required. The first important material required for carrying out this test is the water sample. We cannot use the water sample as such. We have to serially dilute it to 100 ml. So why 100 ml? Because on result analysis, the number of coliforms per 100 ml will be reported. So for this reason, the water sample that we are using for this test are serially diluted to 100 ml. The materials required for presumptive tests or media used for presumptive test is lactose broth. It is used in single and double strength. Single and double strength are not much complicated. It just indicates the strength of the media. For example, each media we will be having a particular quantity or amount of media that should be added in particular volume of water. For example, considering for nutrient broth, if we add 13 grams of media in 1 liter of water, it is single strength. And if we double the value, that is 13 into 2, that 26 grams of media in 1 liter of water, it is double strength media. The second requirement is the test tubes. We will be requiring 15 test tubes which is divided into 3 sets each having 5 test tubes. And the third important material required is the Durham's tube which is shown in the picture nearby. It is used to identify the gas production in the media after fermentation process. And we will be requiring the pipettes for adding the required volumes of water. The media used for confirmative test is brilliant green lactose pile broth which is shown in the picture above. The green color is the normal broth and after the positive result, we will be observing the other two. For completed test, EMB agar that is eosine methylene blue agar is used. Now let's see how to do the presumptive test. Let's divide the procedure into two parts, media preparation and mechanism. The lactose broth should be prepared in two different strengths, single and double strength. Double strength is nothing but just doubling the quantity of media required for media preparation. As already stated, there should be three set of test tubes and each having five tubes in it. For the first set, we will be adding double strength lactose broth. In second and third set, each having five tubes, single strength lactose broth should be added. To all these test tubes, the Dharam tube should be added in an inverted position. One of the important points to be noted at this stage is that the Dharam tube should be added without any bubble formation because if the Dharam tube has bubbles before uh, sterilization itself, it can indicate the false positive results. When the media is sterilized by autoclaving at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Now the media is ready, we have sterilized it and it should be cooled to room temperature. Now we are going to add the water sample to the test tubes. For adding water samples, sterile pipettes should be used. 
to the first set of test tubes containing double strength lactose broth, 10 ml of the diluted water sample should be added. To the second set containing single strength lactose broth, 1 ml of the water sample should be added. And to the third set of test tubes containing single strength lactose broth, 0.1 ml of the water sample should be added. Then all the tubes are incubated at 37 degree for 24 hours. And if we don't get any positive results after 24 hours, it can be even re-incubated up to 48 hours. After 24 hours of incubation, look for changes in color of the media, turbidity or bubble formation in the Durham's tube. If there is no changes, re-incubate it for another 24 hours. Even after re-incubation, there is no changes, we can declare that the water is in good quality and it is suitable for drinking and it is portable. But if there is any change, we have to interpret the result. There will be two types of changes. There is change in color due to the drop in pH which is caused by the production of acid and the bubbles in the Durham's tube which is caused due to the gas production. So we have to note down the number of positive tubes in each set. And we have to compare the number of tubes to the standard chart that is available. From the standard chart, the number of bacteria present in the sample can be estimated. So we can go into this picture. If all the five tubes are positive in the set A, we are considering as five, and only two tubes are positive in set B. And in the set C, there is no tubes positive. So the MPN index will be 5 to 0. On comparing with the positive chart, we can see for 5 to 0, it's 49 CFU per 100 ml. It is just an approximate value. According to 95% confidence level, the number of coliform can be between 17 to 130 CFU per 100 ml. From the results of presumptive test itself, we can identify whether a water sample has coliform or not. But there are some cases in which other bacteria can also break down lactose into lactic acid and produce gas. This can cause positive results in presumptive test, but the water sample might not have the coliform. So this indicates a false positive result. So to confirm the presence of coliform, we are moving on to the second test that is confirmatory test. In this test, the brilliant green bile lactose broth, which is a specialized media for growing coliform bacteria, and it also inhibits the growth of the other bacteria. In this media also, the Durham's tube is added to indicate the presence of gas formation. So 10 ml of the sample from the positive tubes of the presumptive test are added to the brilliant green bile lactose broth and it is incubated. After incubation, if we are uh, observing the gas production in the Durham's tube and growth, we can confirm that the gas production is due to the coliform bacteria only. And to confirm it further, we are moving on to the completed test. In this test, we are using EMB agar or eosin methylene blue agar. It's a differential media in which coliform bacteria, especially E. coli, can grow with the green metal metallic sheen shown in this figure. So we will be plating positive resulted tubes from the confirmatory test. And after incubation, if we are observing the greenish, greenish metallic sheen colonies, we can 100% confirm that the water has coliform bacteria and it is not suitable for drinking purpose. This method has several advantages and few disadvantages. This method is easy to carry out and it is also effective. And it is also convenient for processing all water samples ranging from seawater to mud water. A disadvantage is that it takes long time because for each test we are having 24 hours of incubation time. So uh, if we are processing the water samples today, we will be getting uh, the result only tomorrow. So uh, in the meantime, the water can get contaminated. Until the results of completed test, there is a danger of false positive or false negative. But this method serves as a gold standard method for analyzing the portability quality of the water samples. So in this video, we have checked how the water quality used for drinking purpose should be checked using MPN method. And it has three major tests like presumptive test, confirmatory test and completed test. And we have also observed advantages and disadvantages. Bye.